his heart to let it work in our hearts and our lives, that we may do something with it to honor and glorify your name. We ask you, Lord, to keep watching over our request, spoken and unspoken. You know each and every intent of our heart, Lord. You know what we need. Let us be in your will and out of your way. Please, yeah. Lord, uh, give anyone saving trap and mercy, Lord, that's traveling this weekend. Lord, anyone that was sick and afflicted that couldn't be here tonight, help them be back at the next point in time. Just watch over us, lead and direct us, forgive us when we found thee. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, if you grab your Bibles tonight, you can turn to Proverbs chapter 23. We finished up chapter 22 last week, so we're going to start in verse 1. Chapter 23 tonight. And we're going to read down to verse 8. Proverbs chapter 23, verses 1 through 8. And when you find your places, if you'll stand with me in reverence to God's Word. Amen. Says, so starting in verse 1, When thou sittest to eat with a ruler, consider diligently what is before thee. And put a knife to thy throat, if thou be a man given to appetite. Be not desirous of his dainties, for they are deceitful meat. Labor not to be rich, cease from thine own wisdom. Wilt thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings, and they fly away as an eagle toward heaven. Eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye, neither desire thou his dainty meats. Whereas he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. Yeah. The morsel which thou hast eaten, shalt thou vomit up, and lose thy sweet words. Yeah. Lord, we thank you tonight for your uh, word and the wisdom, Lord, that is in your word, the truth. Lord, we just pray that you would open the eyes of our understanding tonight that we may understand, Lord, that we might truly be able to uh, understand in a way that we can apply these truths uh, in our lives, Lord, to follow you even more closely, and Lord, to surrender more fully, and to be a vessel Lord, filled by your Holy Spirit that you can use for your mercy and grace. Amen. Lord, we just pray that you forgive us where we fail you. And Lord, help us to truly uh, be ambassadors for Christ and to be witnesses to others of your mercy and grace. And Lord, we thank you and love you for all your blessings to us, even though we don't deserve them. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Starting in verse 1, he says, When thou sittest to eat with a ruler, consider diligently what is before thee, and put a knife to thy throat, if thou be a man given to appetite. Be not desirous of his dainties, for they are deceitful meat. Verse 6 says, Eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye, Neither desire thou his dainty meats. Yeah. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he, but his heart is not with thee. And uh, temptation is something that we all deal with on a daily basis. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we, under, we need to understand our own weaknesses. Right. And uh, that we are given, this flesh is given to certain appetites. And, uh, you know, we need to keep ourselves and consider diligently uh, the things of life. Amen? Amen? And as the Bible says, to keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. And so that diligence is what we need in our lives. Amen? To keep ourselves from those traps uh, that Satan would put in our way. And from the traps of enemies. Uh, you know, uh, the traps of the flesh and the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, all these things that would cause us to fall, uh, we need to consider our path, our way, very diligently so that we do not fall into those traps, so that we can uh, endure temptation, so that we can uh, understand 
that uh, God has made a way of escape. Amen? Yeah. Or whatever uh, tempts us, whatever is, is alluring to our flesh, God has made a way of escape. And uh, we just need to find that way of escape. Amen? Yeah. Look at Hebrews chapter 5. To discern both good and evil. Yeah. And this is what we're talking about tonight. Being able to discern. In other words, to consider diligently. Discern between good and evil. To understand the pitfalls that are set in, in life to cause us to fall uh, by our enemy. And we do have an enemy. Amen? Yeah. And uh, he is... Uh, very diligent himself in trying to keep us from being able to serve the Lord and be a witness for the Lord. Yeah. And so if we're going to be able to discern both good and evil, then we don't need to be babes in the word of righteousness. Amen? But we need to study to show ourselves approved unto God. We need to uh, keep ourselves in the Word of God every day. It's not just something that we do for a while and, and, and get to a certain point and quit. No, it's something that we do every day of our life till Jesus calls us home. And it doesn't matter how old you are or how young you are. It is all about your desire to follow after Jesus Christ. Amen. It is about your desire to want to please Him. It's about your desire uh, and your fear of the Lord, not wanting to fall uh, from fellowship uh, or out of fellowship from our, uh, from our Heavenly Father. And so we'll, if we want to have that close fellowship with the Lord, then we're going to want to know uh, and to be able to discern both good and evil. To be able to discern those pitfalls and those traps that are laid for us uh, by our enemy. But the sad thing is, is that when people should be to the point of teaching others, they need to be taught again. Because they haven't kept themselves in the Word of God. They haven't kept themselves in the admonition of the Lord. And therefore, uh, they have backslidden and they have forgotten even what the principles of the Word is, are. Yeah. And so it is something that you have to do. Be, it's just like exercise. You have to keep with it. Amen? You have to exercise yourself every day in the Word of God. So that the Spirit can lead you. And guide you. And show you the will of the Lord. Look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Because Satan is a snake in the grass. <laughs> He's very subtle. And he brings those traps and temptations very subtly. Uh, in a way that you might not even expect. And that's why we need the discernment of the Holy Spirit in the knowledge of the Word of God so that we can understand uh, when we're being led astray, when we're being tempted, when we, uh, when there is a trap in the way, we need to know about it. And the Bible says for us uh, to be uh, wise as serpents and harmless as, as doves. We need to know the tactics of our enemy right. and how and what he likes to use against us to cause us to fall. Right. 
And then when we know the tactics of our enemy, then we know how to fight the good yeah. fight of faith uh, more effectively. Uh, and so, uh, you know, it, I'll use sports as an example. When you're going up against a team, you need to watch film on that team to see uh, what plays they like to run and, and what sets they run in, in certain plays and, and, and who uh, is their go-to guy in certain situations. And when you know what, what the uh, opponent likes to do, then you can better form a plan against them to stop them. Right. And so when we know the tactics of Satan and how he likes and how subtle he is and how he likes to creep up in our lives, then we know we can stop it. Right. Just as, you know, for an example, my boss that I had up in the city, uh, he was from a background of a drinking problem. And he said he didn't uh, listen to country music because when he listened to country music, it made him want to drink. Right? And so that was something that Satan could use against him to cause him to, to want to drink. And so he didn't listen to country music because he knew if he did, then he would get that temptation to want to go and drink. So that's what I'm talking about of knowing the tactics of Satan. Satan likes to use those things against us that he knows is going to draw us in to a temptation that our flesh has to cause us to fall. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 18 through 24, it says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ concerning you. Quench not the Spirit. Despise not prophesying. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless under the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Faithful is he that calleth you who also We'll do it. Amen. We need to understand we're not alone. Amen? <laughs> that we have the Lord with us to guide us, to strengthen us, to lead us from temptation. As the model prayer in, in the, the Gospels, He said, uh, lead, us not, uh, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. That's God's plan. Amen? God wants to deliver us from evil. He Amen. wants to lead us away from temptation. But we need to understand that it, you know, He can't lead us if we're not following. And so we do need to do these things. We do need to uh, rejoice in the Lord. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks to God in everything. Quench not the Spirit. Keep ourselves in the Word of God. Despise not prophesying. Prove all things. Put it to the test. Amen? In the Word of God, put it into practice in your life and see that it is true. And hold fast that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Amen? Amen. <laughs> I tell you what, if we'll abstain from all appearance of evil, even if it looks bad, yeah. if we'll stay away from what looks bad, that yeah. sure will go a long way Amen. to keeping us from falling into a trap. Amen? But the problem is, is people don't realize just how dangerous an enemy we face. Yeah. And so they think they can get by with even playing around with the appearance of evil. And then before they know it, they've been caught in a trap. Right. And they've been snared. If we'll abstain from the appearance, all appearance of evil, just as the saying goes, an ounce or... or yeah, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Amen? And if we'll even stay away from the very appearance of evil, that will go a long ways to keeping us from falling into that sin and that trap. And so, uh, if we will do what God wants us to do and follow after Him, then He will lead us from temptation. He will 
deliver us from evil. He will uh, present and preserve us blameless to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Look at 1 Peter chapter 5. First Peter chapter 5, verses 8 through 11, it says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. You're not an island to yourself. Amen. Everyone goes through the same temptations. Maybe not the exact same that you may have, but we all have temptations that Satan tries to use against us. Amen. That's why we need to uplift each other. Amen. Because uh, those same afflictions are accomplished in our brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto His eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that He hath suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. Yeah. To Him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Yeah. Just as we read, faithful is he who calleth you, who also will do it. Yeah. If we'll just be sober, be vigilant, keep our minds clear, and be faithful. Amen? Be vigilant. Be awake. God will deliver us from that roaring lion. And then he says, And put a knife to thy throat, if thou be a man given to appetite. We've got to learn, and this comes from just, again, really from the power of the Holy Spirit, uh, walking with the Lord in His Word every day, praying in the Spirit, singing songs and spiritual songs. I tell you what, if you're having a problem, man, put on some Christian music. I'm not talking about the Christian music that appeals to the flesh. I'm talking about some good gospel music. Right. Sing the songs you sing in church. Amen. Amen. Because the songs we sing in church, they'll get you to a place of worship. Amen. 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 And, and get your mind on the right path that will keep you from thinking thoughts you shouldn't think. Yeah. And being tempted in ways you shouldn't be tempted. Amen. Start singing Amazing Grace. Start singing it as well with my soul. Start singing at Calvary. Amen. Yeah. Years I spent in vanity and pride. Caring not my Lord was crucified. Amen. Yeah. You start singing some hymns and God's going to He's gonna deliver you. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You start praying and God's going to deliver you. You start speaking the word and reading the word and God's going to deliver you. Yeah. We need to understand that it's going to be by the power of God that we are able to subdue our flesh. Amen. Put a knife to thy throat. Yeah. Amen. Bring your body into subjection. Because we know we're all men given to appetites. Yeah. We know this flesh is desperately wicked. Look at Matthew chapter 5. And we have no confidence in this flesh. Amen. Or we shouldn't. Let him that thinketh he stand take heed lest he fall. Amen. You start having confidence in your flesh, you've already fallen. Yeah. Yeah. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 27 through 30 it says, Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. Well, 
if somebody is caught in the act, well, of course they're guilty. But we can't read each other's minds, can we? We don't know what we're all thinking. We don't know what all is in our heart, do we? But Jesus just put it to that level. <laughs> just because you didn't actually go through with it doesn't mean that you're not guilty. Amen? We need to fight the good fight of faith. And if the right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. Yeah. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. Yeah. It hath been said... Whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorce. But I say unto you that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, causeth her to commit adultery. And whosoever shall marry her that is divorced, committeth adultery. Again, ye have heard that it hath been said by them of old time that thou shalt not forswear thyself, but shalt perform unto the Lord thine oaths. But I say unto you, swear not at all. Neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, neither, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Neither shalt thou swear by thy head, because thou canst not make one hair white or black. But let your communication be yea, yea, nay, nay. For whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. Amen. Listen. We need to understand that it goes far beyond actions. Yep. It goes to the thoughts and intents of the heart. Yep. Yep. It goes down to what we think about. That's really where the battle is, mm -hmm. is in our mind right. and our thoughts. I want to tell you what, when you start getting thoughts you shouldn't have, you need to start putting in the thoughts you should have. As I said, start reading your Bible, start praying, start singing hymns and spiritual songs. If you're in a place that's causing temptation, get out. Leave. If you're around someone that's causing you to be tempted, get away from them. But I don't want to hurt their feelings. I'm going to tell you what. <laughs> There's going to be a lot more than just feelings hurt if you stay around. Yeah. <laughs> because you're causing yourself to fall. Right. It ain't a game. Amen. Right. Amen. I'm going to tell you what, sin will take you far more or <laughs> farther than you want to go. Yeah. And cost you far more than you want to pay. Amen. And so we need to abstain from all appearance of yeah. evil. And we need to learn to put this body into subjection. Right. And we're going to do that by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And singing those songs, praying in the Holy Spirit, reading His Word, and flee. That's what Tim Timothy, or Paul told Timothy, flee youthful lust. Flee, run. <laughs> Get away. <laughs> Don't hang around. We need to understand that we need people in our life that is going to draw us closer to the Lord and not draw us away from the Lord. Right. And not just people, but things in our life. We need things in our life that's going to cause us to get closer to the Lord and not pull us away. Yeah. Look at 1 Peter chapter 4. Say, well, I'm not breaking any laws. 
Well, you might be, you, that don't mean you're right with God. <laughs> we need to seek to please God, not just to justify what we do. Amen. First Peter chapter 4 and verses 1 through 8 says, For as much then as Christ hath suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that hath suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin. I don't believe he's talking about suffering as far as causing yourself pain, but I do believe he's talking about bringing your body under subjection. Putting the will of God before the will of the flesh. Yeah. And that's, that's suffering because your flesh is not going to like it. <laughs> your flesh is going to fight back. Right. Sometimes it's a heavy battle. Yeah. But, you know, that's maybe when you need to call your pastor and say, hey, let's talk for a while. Yeah. Or find somebody in the church. Hey, can I come over? Because I'm going to tell you what, sometimes that flesh is very, very weak. Yeah. The spirit, the Bible says, is willing. Right. But that flesh is weak. Right. Yeah. Amen. That he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lasciviousness, lusts, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries. And that revelings and banquetings is partying and having a wild good time. And that's all people want to do. Work for the weekend, right? So they can get drunk and have a party and have a good time. Well, that's not the way we ought to be. Wherein they think it strange that you run not with them. <laughs> when you say, no, I'm not going. No, I don't do that anymore. They're going to look at you like you're a weirdo. Yeah. What's wrong with you? Everybody does that. That's what we do. Boy, you're a stick in the mud. Well, that's okay. Amen. I've got my affections on higher things. Amen. And not on things of this earth. Wherein they think it strange that ye run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you. Mark it down. They'll talk behind your back. Yeah. Oh, he, he thinks he's better than everybody else. Yeah. Who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead. For for this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the Spirit. Praise God that the gospel was preached. Amen. Amen. Yeah. That we're not dead anymore, but alive in Jesus Christ. Maybe dead to the flesh, but alive in the Lord. Amen. Amen. For I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Amen. Amen. But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. And that is what we need to do. Amen. And above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Yeah. And look at 1 Corinthians chapter 9. First Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 through 27, it says, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that ye may obtain. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air. But I keep under my body, and bring it unto, into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, 
I myself should be a castaway. You say, what is he talking about here? He's talking about doing what you know you ought to be doing. Mm -hmm. Amen? I tell you what, if you're not doing what you ought to be doing, then you're not very far from falling into those traps if you haven't already fallen into those traps. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Because if you're not being faithful to the Lord, then you're going to go back. Yeah. <laughs> That's why he said, I run, not as uncertainly, not like I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. And I fight, not as just practicing. Mm -hmm. But I'm doing, I'm giving it my all. Amen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not holding back. Why? Because that's the best way to keep your body in subjection is to keep yourself faithful to the Lord. Yeah. Keep yourself where you need to be, serving Him. Right. And following Him Amen. so that you're not falling backwards. Right. And then thirdly, says, labor not to be rich. Cease from thine own wisdom. And I think a lot of people just, that's what they think life is about. Is how successful in the world they can become with money and wealth and all the things that we can accumulate. But you know what? Our life is about Jesus Christ. If we're saved, then our life is not our own. And it's about serving Him. Cease from thine own wisdom. Get rid of what you think. And get what the Lord thinks. Yeah. John chapter 6. In verse 26 and 27 it says, Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, ye seek me, not because ye seek uh, saw the miracles, but because ye did eat of the loaves and were filled. Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that meat which endureth unto ever everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Sometimes, why do we go to church? Why do we seek the Lord? Is it just because we're wanting something? Is it just because, you know, there's some need that we have? We need to seek the Lord because we love Him. Yeah, amen. 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 And because He first loved us yeah. and gave us that everlasting life. Yeah, amen. And then, you know what? He'll give us what we need. He loves us more than we can even imagine. Yeah. More than we can fathom. Yeah. If we'll just love Him back and just want to serve Him because of how much He's done for us and not what He's going to do for us. Because He's done a lot, amen? If He stopped doing something for us right to now today, it would be more than what we could ever Amen. pay back for. Amen. Look at 1 Timothy chapter 6. First Timothy chapter 6. Uh, 6 and verse 6 through 10 says, But godliness with contentment is great gain. Yeah. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. Right. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men into de in destruction and perdition. Yeah. 
For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. They say, sat at that ruler's table and they didn't consider diligently. And they gave in to their appetite because of all that was promised. Gave in to the pleasures of life. You know what? They erred from the faith and pierced yeah. themselves through with many sorrows. Yeah. It's not worth it. Yeah. Look at Matthew chapter 6. If you will, well, we won't stand on this one because it's pretty long. Matthew chapter 6, starting in verse 19. He says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay it up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. Yeah. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Amen. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. Amen. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field which it today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Amen. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Amen. 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 So many times Satan gets us by getting us to worry about the future. Yeah. Right? Start worrying about the future and the evil that's facing us today gets us because we weren't being diligent today. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Yeah. Amen. God's already there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We don't have to worry about it. We just need to keep our eyes on Him today. Amen. Yeah. Because today is the day of salvation. Amen. Now is the accepted time. Amen. Let's fight the good fight today. Amen. 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 Lord, we thank you tonight for your word. We just pray that you help us. Lord, to put these things that we have heard here tonight into practice in our lives. Lord, that we would truly seek after you each day. That you give us, Lord, to follow you, to... Lord, not just say that we believe in You and to say that, Lord, we believe Your Word, but to have fellowship with You in Your Word every day. 
Lord, for we know that that fellowship that we have with you every day is going to keep us uh, on the right path. Lord, that we might truly uh, have our steps, each step that we take established. Lord, that you can lead us from those temptations in our life and to, and to de deliver us from the evil that surrounds us. And Lord, we just thank you for how you have promised and how you deliver. Lord, how you perform the things which you've begun in us until the day of Christ. And we give you honor, glory, and praise for all these things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Altar is open for those who want to pray. You may be seated as we sing. Page 211.
take up that offering, we'd be blessed. Amen. Mm -hmm. to this lost and dying world. We pray for those missionaries in foreign fields, Lord, that are preaching your gospel and fighting for the furtherance of your kingdom. We just pray, Lord, that you would attend to their needs in the fashion you see fit. We pray for the underground church and those people that have to worship you in secret for fear that they'll have their heads chopped off, Lord. We just pray that you would send them comfort through the truth, Lord, for that's the only comfort we truly have. We thank you for this message, Lord, and I just pray, Lord, that we can... Invest in those things which truly matter, which are those heavenly things. That we would put our treasure up in heaven, for where our treasure is, our heart there our heart shall be also, Father. That we could be like that man who found that treasure in a field, and he went and sold all he hath, and he bought that field, Lord. That that treasure would be Amen. in our lives, that people would see you working in us. We pray for this offering, Lord. We pray for those that have to give, and those that have not. We just love you, Lord, and we thank you so much for loving us and sending Jesus Christ as that ultimate sacrifice, Lord, that we could believe on him and have everlasting life. And in all these things we pray in his precious and holy name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
231. Yeah, Arena and David's anniversary. Magdalena, did you have one? 